Hello, my name is Will Jordan. I'm a Sage Accounts Product Specialist at Bishop Fleming Chartered Accountants. Today I'd like to talk to you about how to create and submit your online VAT return using Sage 50 Accounts 2010. This will be a compulsory requirement for all companies with a VAT period commencing on or after 1st of April 2010. The only exemption is for businesses with a turnover below 100k per annum. Setting up your online VAT return in SAGE. In order for you to be able to submit your VAT return through SAGE, you need to enter your e-submission details into the program. To do this, go to the Settings menu, Company Preferences, and the VAT tab. In here, you need to make sure that the Enable eVAT Submissions box is ticked. When you tick this, you'll be then asked to fill in your e-submission credentials and e-submission contact details. The e-submission credentials are the same ones that you'll use to log on to your HMRC Gateway account. Preparing your VAT return. Before you prepare your return, I'd recommend that you take a backup. Once you've taken this backup, go to Company Option, Manage VAT, and click on the VAT return icon. On this screen, you'll need to enter the dates that you wish to report on, and click Calculate. OK this screen. This will now bring up your summary report for that period. To view the reports, click Print, and it will give you the option of the three reports. The VAT return report gives you a summary of what's on the screen. Uh, the summary report will give you a breakdown of each box sorted into transaction type and tax code. Um, the detailed report will give you a transactional breakdown of each box on the VAT return. I won't run these reports for now. Once you're happy with the figures on the return, you can then reconcile. What this does, it will give each transaction a flag to say that it's been used in the return and it will then not be used in subsequent returns. Submitting the return to the HMRC. Firstly, you need to select the return which you wish to submit. A single click will highlight it and then the Submit Return button will bring up this screen. This screen warns you that this process cannot be reversed and that you're legally responsible for the content on your VAT return. Continue. This gives you the chance to double check the details entered into the settings menu. If you're happy with them, click submit. On live data, this would be a green tick and it would say the submission of your data has been successful. You would also receive a unique correlation ID which will act as your receipt from the revenue. I'd recommend that you print this off and file it. Once you've done this, your VAT return has successfully been submitted to HMRC. Taking a backup. If you wish to take a backup before processing your VAT return on Sage, go to File and Backup. I would always recommend that you do check the data before you backup. Ensure that there are no errors. If so, click Close and Close again, and you then have the backup screen. On here, I'd amend the file name to include the transaction number which will be found at the bottom right hand corner of your Sage screen and then select the location where you wish the backup to be saved. For example the C drive. Advanced options tab this gives you the choice of the files which you wish to back up. For day-to-day -day backups I would recommend just having the data files box ticked. Once you're happy with all of your settings click OK and the backup's been successful. Thank you for taking the time to watch the tutorial. My name's Will Jordan from Bishop Fleming Chartered Accountants. My details are now on the screen. If you want to contact me with either regards to the tutorial or any other SAGE related questions, please feel free to get in touch. Thank you.